This video is for educational purposes so that you may be able to identify and prevent these from taking place. The players in this video are merely actors and the duels are not representative of competitive tournament sanctioned games except for the Konami and ARG footage used under the laws of fair use. Come face me, give in to your pride. Happening plebs, today we'll be looking at cheating in light of recent events. As you're aware, we had one of the most riddled YCSs ever. So hopefully this video is just going to be a massive comprehensive guide in understanding cheating, how to spot it, and how to prevent it. So this video will be dealt with in two sections. We'll begin with the sleight of hand cheating and then mechanical cheating. Sleight of hand cheating involves stacking or manipulating your deck in some illegal physical capacity. Mechanical cheating will involve primarily things like illegal activations or the misrepresentation of the game state. So remember, don't try this at home. This is purely educational. And let's get into the video. So here we have a very super basic one. This is scoping. Actually, both players in this scene are scoping each other's decks, as we wanted to highlight that it can look very different from scope to scope. Player on the left is riffle shuffling in a very wide capacity where the cards are all fanned out so that he can see the cards through the middle. The player on the right has the deck almost at eye level. People scope because they can see what you're playing in a best case scenario and in the worst case scenario, they're picking out your good cards to stack to the bottom and your bad cards to stack to the top. The best way to avoid this, ask your opponent to make sure they hold your deck off to the side and keep the cards as close to the table and as flat as possible. Because you don't want to get dwellered in a format of zoo when you're playing Mermel turn 1. Next we've got bottom drawing. Bottom drawing, as the name would suggest, is drawing for turn off the bottom of your deck instead of the top. Well, you're probably wondering why is that relevant, it's still random. Well, when you combine this with scoping, a cheater is almost always guaranteed to start the duel with a power card of sorts. So as you can see here, the cheater scopes the bottom of their own deck as the player passes it over, pretending they're just fixing it straight so they can place it in the deck zone comfortably. If they see a good card, they draw from the bottom, like in these clips, but if they see a brick card you don't want to open in your hand, they simply just leave it at the bottom. It's a win-win situation for the cheater. See a good card, draw it. See a bad card, leave it at the bottom. The scope is not obvious at all from a stream view, but if we check this over the shoulder player cam, you can see very clearly that he's scoping the bottom card, then deciding whether it's worth bottom drawing or not. And there's also two versions of bottom drawing. So here we see a clasping bottom draw by the player. So this involves drawing two cards at once in one swift motion from bottom and top, both at the same time. And here's the over the shoulder perspective. So the best way to avoid this is, again, place your opponent's deck in their deck zone for them and check that their fingers are firmly above their deck. Do not draw your cards while your deck is not flat on the table and in its proper zone. Now we go to what I guess is like search stacking. There's a ridiculous amount of versions and variants of this, but here's probably two of the most common ones. Basically, whenever the player goes into the deck to perform a search, they pick out a card they need and place it on the bottom. Then shuffle or switch it to the top for next turn or draw it immediately from something like upstart goblin here we see the player take imperial order place it to the bottom then in one swift motion switch it to the top And here's the second version, where the player takes it to the bottom and then shuffles it to the top, rather than performing a switch. How to avoid it? Cut your opponent's deck. It's that simple. I know that sounds really obvious, but in the heat of a duel and when you're trying to work out a play or you're checking the grave or you're just trying to get on with the game because you're both in time, a lot of players begin to neglect or simply forget to cut their opponent's deck. Always cut your opponent's deck when they are done searching. It's that simple. This cheat involves searching an illegal target, then revealing a legal target in hand. In the footage, you can see the player actually has the audacity to not only add an illegal target, but a legal target also going plus one. He does this by causing a distraction, leaning forward, asking for life points, and hiding his hand pile with his chest. 
This is a lot more effective if your sleeves and mat are the same colors as well. A lot of players will reveal a target in hand rather than going plus, but this is to show you the extreme version as, like I said before, halfway through an intense duel, people stop keeping track of things like cards in hand or total card advantage. To prevent this, just make sure your opponent's hand and their deck are at a distance from one another at all times, especially when they search. Don't let them cross it over, and if you're feeling too shy and awkward to say anything, keep a count of their cards in hand and track it visually to see they don't drop a target from deck into their pile like in this clip. This is the indentation stacking. This is a bit more of an advanced type of stacking as this requires a bit of subtlety but also the confidence to force the opponent to do what the cheater wants. A cheater will stack either one or a group of their best cards, usually an opening hand, to the middle of their deck. Then they will present their deck to you with a slight indentation in the middle of their deck. Your fingers then subconsciously cut the deck at the indentation they gave you since it's the path of least resistance. The cheater basically tells you where they want you to cut their deck, and you cut where they indent since it's the most comfortable to your fingers. Here you can see the indent being made from the over the top view. And here you see the over the shoulder view, where you can clearly see the indent is being left for the player, and they just simply cut at where they find to be the most comfortable at that time. The best way to avoid this is never cut your opponent's deck straight down the middle, and always change up the way you cut their deck. So you could cut the top 5 cards, or the bottom 5 cards, and keep switching it up so they don't develop a pattern. Even do a bit of a riffle shuffle before they come to use a draw card. Whatever you do, do not cut at the indentation. So this is something that became a bit popular in recent months, but this is the Desires Pile Swap. Now obviously this can be done with the graveyard too if you aren't keeping track, but Desires makes it a little bit more easier since a banished pile is something that people don't really seem to know where to put. But any sort of sleight of hand can go from between hand and banish zone or grave quite easily if you're not paying attention. So as you can see, the player creates a distraction by asking for the life again, uh, leaning over and then swapping the banished imperial order for something in hand. Now again, as I mentioned before, just keep all your cards in their proper zones and in their proper marked areas and you won't have problems with people exchanging cards between the zones. Double drawing is very popular and might be used on you if you don't actively ask for cards in hand. Probably one of the easiest cheats to get away with too if you aren't keeping track of the gameplay properly halfway through a match. A very dexterous and good cheater will almost always get away with the draw from deck, but so long as you keep track of cards in hand you should be okay. However, bear in mind some might go above and beyond and hide cards behind other cards to make it appear that they have less cards in hand than they really do. If you suspect a double draw, you can ask your opponent to spread their hand out face down, or obviously call a judge. Marking cards is another very big cheat. The player here checks the graveyard and then goes on to pinch the corner of the mirror force. Now this was done quite obviously to demonstrate to you the viewer, and of course a cheater is probably going to be a lot more subtle about it than this clip, but it's just to make you aware. They can mark this so that they know you've drawn the Mirror Force in games 2 and 3, or they can mark it to call a judge on you and claim that you're the one marking your own cards. Now this is done either by pinching corners or scraping the back with fingernails, or in worst case scenario, uh, body oil from pure hygiene. Uh, yeah, that, that, that was a thing one time. So just keep an eye on your opponent anytime they handle your cards and double check the cards after they're done handling them if you aren't quite sure. Main decking side cards is something more common at the local and regional level but if you're in like pure zoo format and your opponent is main decking shadow imprisoning mirror I'd probably be a little bit suspicious if I just happened to be the only burning abyss player in the room. You can't call a judge because of this because that would be directly accusing your opponent of cheating. If you do have good reason to assume that your opponent is cheating then you can call a judge. The least that you can do is ask your opponent how many cards are in their side 
and to count out their side cards on the table if you do really suspect it. Signaling is another type of cheating. Some people will signal to a friend while standing by their opponent, scratch at the nose, grab at the ear, it could be anything really like a cough in this example, to indicate that your back row are bluffs or real. If there's people behind you and you suspect them of signalling, ask them to move away or at the very least keep your hand to your chest and your back row concealed. Lapping is another type of cheat. This involves taking a specific card and hiding it under your mat, off to the side, beside your deck box or, as the name would suggest, in your lap. Then picking it up during the draw phase. Keep an eye on your opponent's hand during the draw phase at all time. Make sure their cards are in the middle of the mat and in plain view at all times. Here's an example of a very good paleo frog hand. In a 40 card deck, stacking in the ratios of 5 and then 8 piles results in your starting 5 cards being in the final pile. Sometimes players will come to the table with their deck pre-stacked and pile shuffle in front of you just as a show, without actually changing the deck ratios into random piles. Again, just simply cut your opponent's deck, it's that simple. Some players will see their opponent pile shuffle and then riffle shuffle convincingly and assume that that's enough without even bothering to cut. Cheaters are there to convince you. Just cut your opponent's deck, it doesn't matter how convincing their pile shuffle is, just cut it, it's simple. This one's not so relevant anymore, but setting monsters in Infernity. One extra monster in your hand can completely brick your opening play, so people used to, well, set the brick in their spell or trap zone and then continue from there. Other examples in recent years would be Necros players turning off their secret village by setting a random monster in the field spell zone to destroy secret village and, well, letting them play spells. There's no definitive way to prevent this, unfortunately. Just be alert, know the rules of the game, mention it to the judges between rounds. Unfortunately, you can't really go around accusing people of cheating with nothing to go by except just a hunch. That's the reality. Alright, this video took way much more effort and time and work than I anticipated, but we're finally through part one. So, like I said, part one deals with sleight of hand cheating, physical cheating, the way that you actually handle your cards in the game. So, uh, so, really sorry if I missed anything out, but hopefully that is literally every single comprehensive type of physical cheating that one can do in the game. So, I hope you guys learned a lot from that. And again, remember, the important thing is to always just cut your opponent's deck, and if you're unsure about anything, just ask a judge. Now, we move on to the second part of the video, which will be mechanical cheating. Now, this is uh, just not really a technical term. It's something I kind of just made up on the spot so mechanical cheating involves misrepresentation of game uh manipulation of life and all that kind of stuff just stuff to do with you know not actually like using your hand to cheat but just simply using the game itself to cheat so uh, a lot of these will seem very obvious to you and if you're going to take anything away from this part of the video just read the card that's literally the best way to avoid being cheated mechanically so on to the rest of the video the Paleozoic cards discard for effect, not uh, for cost. So the player here activates Dynamiscus and then chains the same card that he is supposed to be discarding. And there's so many examples of this in different forms and cards. Just read your cards, even if you've seen them before. If it feels somewhat suspicious, just double check the PSET. Uh, call a judge if you're not sure as well. Misrepresentations of conditions and lingering effects, etc. There's lots of examples, but here we see the Cosmo player summon Dark Destroyer with the effect of Diagram, popping itself to get Strawman. Strawman's effect reads that it can summon a Cosmo card while negating its effects. We here you see the player attempting to Dynamiscus the Dark Destroyer, but the Cosmo player passes off that the effect of Dark Destroyer is still active and not negated, claiming that he cannot target it. Misrepresenting conditions and lingering effects, they're all very commonly done either out of ignorance or out of maliciousness. He then forces his opponent to target his straw man since he's flipped it up, just for that salt in the wound. Illegal activations are something that's very common as well, and a lot of the time they're done out of ignorance, but here we see the Cosmo player attempts to ghost ogre their own Cosmo Town for the search effect. The problem is, he actually cannot legally activate Cosmo Town in the first place, since he doesn't have any Cosmo monsters in his hand. But always make sure that all the requirements listed on a card are fulfilled, Make sure the activations are met correctly, and if you're unsure, just call a judge. Discrepancies in life are so common as well. If you don't show up with a pen and paper, then don't be surprised if your opponent accidentally forgets an instant fusion payment, a trick clown, or a little hundred here and there. 
It's your responsibility to make sure that life is being tracked at all times, and if your opponent's the only one tracking life, then, well, the judge is obviously just going to side with them. A calculator is fine, but it's not enough to track life. Keep a pen and paper on you during the duel and write down all the exchanges of damage dealt. Keep your graveyard in order as best you can as well, so that you can rewind and figure out what happened, when and where, if there are any problems with life. I usually just ask my opponent what life they got uh, from the calculation after basically every major interaction of life points, that way we're always on the same page. So here's an example from an ARG stream. Now here's uh, the player using left arm offering and passing off the banish effect as a discard. You see him chain maxi and then place everything in the graveyard, uh, changing an entire word in the card text to fit his needs. Again, just read every card. It's simple and use your logic. If your opponent is discarding three Infernoids to the graveyard with a spell card to search lawn mowing, the chances are that card's probably banned or it's a misinterpretation of card text at best or totally malicious cheating at worst. Prague rules, Denver rules, whatever you want to call them. In the year 2017 where a basic turn one takes seven minutes to resolve playing at maximum pace with shortcuts, it's not a shock that sometimes people do genuinely forget that they've already conducted a normal summon or an entire battle phase apparently. Declare your phases out loud, declare your normal summon out loud, that way you create a subconscious connection in your mind by hearing these being called out audibly. Check the graveyards and don't just zone out if your opponent is performing a wombo combo. That's how Prague and Denver rules occur. And to summarize part 2 which was actually a lot shorter than part 1 because there's just so many variations and examples of how people cheat mechanically but they come under very few blanket terms so they would be misrepresentations of the game state, life points, lingering effects and conditions and then you've got illegal activations, straight up changing the card text apparently, uh, and Prague rules and of course Denver rules. So remember, if you take anything away from this video, read your cards, cut your opponent's deck, and if you're unsure about anything just call a judge. There's three simple rules to keep you safe. Now shout outs to my friends for helping me out, I couldn't have filmed it without them. If you did like this video, make sure you subscribe for more, like if you liked it, and comment with something witty and share the video around to spread awareness and help other players stay vigilant. Thanks everyone and see you next time. Come face me, give in to your pride. Swag. Swag. Which one's the one? No, no, you didn't. Make sure you like the same time. Oh, uh, <laughs> 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 Mirage, the back row, yeah. Oh, shit. Hang on. Left arm off right, discard your whole hand. Yup, that's a good card, old buddy, old pal. Your whole hand to the graveyard. Yup. Misrep in a nation of games. What did I just say? Misrep in misrepresentation? Misrep in a nation? nation? So you don't want to be involved with plug lose. Plug lose? Plug lose? Prague rules. World star, motherfucker. Prague star. Prague fucking rules, son. Whatever you do, do not cuck your deck. <laughs> do not cut your deck. Do cut. <laughs> y'all cucking my deck, y'all. Y'all cucking, y'all getting the slurp, y'all.